All right, so today we're going to work on finding mid segments <clears throat> on a coordinate plane. I already have this triangle graphed. These are our points A equals 2, 4, B equals negative 3, 2, and C equals 6, 0. So I've got the original triangle graphed. We're going to find the mid segments. And we find mid segments if you remember our definition of a mid segment, it goes from midpoint on one side of a triangle to the midpoint on the second side. So obviously we need to find the midpoints. So we're going to go ahead and use our midpoint formula to do that. If you need to pause the video to get these points written down and get this triangle graph, go ahead and do that at this time. All right, so now we're going to find the midpoints. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start with side AB. So I have 2, 4, and negative 3, 2. If you remember our midpoint formula, our midpoint formula says x1 plus x2 over 2 comma y1 plus y2 over 2 that's in parentheses so we're going to do this for each of the three uh, points that we're dealing with so the first one we're going to do is AB so for AB we're going to use our points 2 4 and 3 negative or negative 3 2 so x1 is 2 plus negative 3 over 2 comma 4 plus 2 over 2 put that all in parentheses 2 plus negative 3 is negative 1 over 2 comma 6 over 2 a little bit of reducing we get negative 1 half comma 3 and we're going to do the same thing for a second side I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do side AC right, so we're doing a side AC now again x1 would be our 2 plus 6 over 2 comma 4 plus 0 over 2 put that all in parentheses 2 plus 6 is 8 over 2 4 over 2 reduce 4 comma 1 we still have our third side to do all right now we're going to do side BC all right so negative 3 plus 6 over 2 comma 2 plus 0 over 2 negative 3 plus 6 is 3 over 2 comma 2 over 2 3 over 2 comma 1 so we have all the points we need to graph we need to graph negative 1 half 3 we need to graph 4 1 and we need to graph 3 halves 1 keep in mind that 3 halves is 1 and a half all right so we're going to go up and we're going to graph those three points on our original triangle so I'm going to start with negative 1 half 3 so negative 1 half 1, 2, 3, I'm going to put a dot right there. That looks pretty good. It looks like it's right in the middle of segment AB. Now I'm going to do 4, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. And we definitely have a mistake. It should be 4, 2. Well, that was a careless mistake coming back down here. Really careless mistake. We make those sometimes. Should have been 4, 2. Maybe I actually did that on purpose so that you would think through it. Maybe not. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1 doesn't make any sense. It's right there. It's not on a side at all. It's definitely not in the middle of a side. But if I go to 4, 2, it is in the middle of a side. It makes much more sense. All right, and then finally we have our point here of 3 halves, comma 1. Remember 3 halves is 1 and 1 half. So we come back up here. 1 and 1 half, comma 1. All right, looks like our three points are all midpoints. Looks like they make sense. So we're going to go ahead and get our straight edge out and connect them. And there we go. Keep in mind that when we do the mid segments of a triangle, when we do all three mid segments, our mid segments should look like they're parallel to the third side and half their length. So this segment right here should look like it's parallel to this. Looks pretty good. This segment here looks like it should be parallel to that. And then finally this segment here looks like it should be parallel to that. So they all look pretty good. Looks like we have our correct mid segments on our coordinate plane. Remember, without a coordinate plane, we would use a compass and straight edge to find our mid segments. So now we're going to move to what happens when I actually give you the small little triangle in the beginning. All right, so we have the small little triangle, we have to find the big triangle outside. So I have that already graphed, set up, ready to go. 
All right, so we're gonna uh, start with our mid segments. Okay, we're gonna graph the larger triangle, which is gonna be somewhere outside like this. Okay, now we can't use the midpoint formula on here because we don't know either x1 or x2. So that would cause major issues. We do not know y1 or y2, so that would also cause problems. So there's a whole lot easier way to do it than just using midpoints. Now, if you haven't graphed these three points yet, we have I have three negative one, we have five three, and we have zero two. Okay, I have those graphed over here. Three negative one, five three, and zero two. Okay, now keep in mind that our mid segment theorem tells us that a mid segment is parallel to the side that it does not intersect. It also tells us that the mid segment is half the length of that side. So what we're going to do is we are going to take a side. It doesn't matter which side you pick to start with. I'm just going to start with x, y. And we are going to find its slope because we know that slopes have to be equal for parallel lines. So x, y's slope here. To get from x to y, I have to go right 2 and up 1, 2, 3, 4. So right 2, up 4. Now, which side does x, y have to be parallel to? Well, it has to be parallel to the opposite side of the triangle, which is over here somewhere. And that side has to go through z. Remember, z is a midpoint. It's an end of a mid segment. It's a midpoint. So z has to be on this side over here somewhere. So we had to go right to up 4. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to z, and we're going to go right 2 and up 1, 2, 3, 4. And we're going to put a dot. Now, Remember, x, y has to be half the length of this side. So I have to do this right to up four thing again. But it wouldn't make any sense to do it up here. Because, yes, it would be twice as long, but z wouldn't be in the middle then. So I want to keep z in the middle. So by going right to and up four, I've got the same distance as x, y up here. Now I need the same thing down here. So all I do is the opposite. So instead of right to and up four, I come back here and I go left two and down four. Okay, so left one, two, down one, two, three, four. I put a dot right here. All right, so this side has the same slope as x, y. Really, if you went from this point all the way to that point, you'd go right four and up eight. Remember, slope is rise over run, so it would be an eight over four, which is two. Reduce all the way down to two. This is up four and right two, so that's also reducing to two. So they have the same exact slope, but this one is twice as long. And that's exactly what we're looking for. All right, so now we need to pick another side. So I'm going to go ahead and do zx right now. Okay, go ahead and do zx. So once again, to get from z to x, all right, so I go down one, two, three, and right one, two, three. So down three, right three. Now, which side does zx have to be parallel to? It has to be parallel to the side across from it over here. Okay, and that side has to go through point y. So I'm going to do the same exact slope, down 3, right 3. So I'm going to come over here to y. I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, and right 1, 2, 3. I'm going to put a dot. Now, if I do the exact opposite, instead of down and right, I go up and left, up 1, 2, 3, and left 1, 2, 3. Look, I end up at the same exact point I started with when I was doing the side x, y. Okay, that's a good thing, same exact point. So what you would always do is put a little check mark here. So I graphed it the first time, and then the second time when I went to do it, it checked. Okay, now the only side I haven't done so far is zy. Okay, so I'm going to do zy. Yes, I have these points. It looks like they're probably accurate, but by doing zy, it's going to check them for me. So to get from z to y, I go up 1 and write 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now which side does zy have to be parallel to? It has to be parallel to this side over here somewhere. X has to be in the middle of it again, okay? Because X is a midpoint. Remember, mid segment goes from midpoint to midpoint. So up one, right one, two, three, four, five. Look, ended up at the exact same point. Once again, that's a good thing. Put a little check mark there. I know that one's right. To double the length, I have to do the exact opposite in order to keep X in the middle. I could go out here somewhere and do a second one, but that doesn't keep X in the middle. So up one, right five. Now I'm going to go down one and left one, two, three, four, five. Same exact point again, so that checks. Now all I gotta do is draw my big triangle. So I get my straight edge out, and we line this up. And do another side. And then finally the third side.
Now if we look at our triangle, okay, it should look like ZY is parallel to this side, which it is. It should look like YX is parallel to this side. It is. It should look like ZX is parallel to this side. It is. It should look like all of these outer sides are twice as long as their corresponding insides. So ZY is half of this distance. It should look like all four triangles in the middle here are congruent to each other, which they are, and similar to the original one. So that's how we find the large triangle when we start with the mid segments.